Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romance recommendations with amazing bantering. I am a sucker for a bantering relationship. It is like one of my favorite things ever, whether it be friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, grumpy sunshine, like I love bantering between two people. Like, oh, it makes me swoon every time I see it, every time I read it. So I'm obsessed with these kinds of books. I have made a few great banter recommendation videos. So I'll link those down below if you wanna go check those out before watching or after watching this one. So let's get started. I have 10 recommendations for you today. First one I have to mention is of course, Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. This fits the grumpy sunshine trope as well, where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine. This is the romance between Riona and Raylan. Raylan is tasked to be Riona's bodyguard after someone has tried to kill her a few times. Her family is a part of the mafia, so they don't know the reason why she's trying to be killed, um, but they assume like it's a part of the mafia, you know? Um, so Raylan is here to protect Riona and he is falling head over heels in love with her every single day. The bantering relationship between these two, <laughs> top notch. They had me like giggling like a schoolgirl when they would like fight with each other, but not really fight with each other, you know what I mean? I am obsessed with both these characters and Raylan just feeds in to the bantering, feeds in to Riona's bickering because he loves it. He loves seeing this woman like come at him. Like he is obsessed with her. So I love these two and their bantering is on like another level. Another favorite of mine that is also Grumpy Sunshine. I guess this is, happens in a lot of Grumpy Sunshine, whatever. So. This is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the romance between Eve and little Mr. Jacob over here. He's not little, he's very tall, but I, I think he is so cute. I love him, but just because he's cute doesn't mean that he can get down, you know? So <laughs> Jacob in here, he is the owner of a bed and breakfast and he is in need of a new chef for the bed and breakfast. He puts up like a help wanted sign basically. Eve in here is basically kind of like a trust fund baby and her parents have cut her off because she's not been able to find like a steady job. So they're like, we'll give you back your money, your dress fund, if you keep a steady job for about a year. So she sees the help wanted sign while just driving around one day and was like, oh, why the heck not? Let's go in. And she decides she's just going to this interview on a whim. Jacob is not a fan of that. He loves order. Jacob is a little bit upset to say the least when this woman walks into the interview with no resume, kind of unprofessional work attire and um, like dripping wet from the rain. Um, so he doesn't really like her at first, but then he has to hire her because uh, she may or may not accidentally hit him with her car after the interview. And she comes and lives in his room, bed and breakfast room with him in order to take care of him and kind of nurse him back to health. This one was really good. Both of them do not start off on the right foot, but Eve is so sunshiny and bubbly and just like, just accepts Jacob completely for who he is. And he, just swoons over Eve almost every time he sees her. Even before he knew he was like in love with her, he was like, why is this woman on my mind all the time? This insufferable woman, why is she on my mind all the time? And ugh. Another contemporary romance is Royally Matched by Emma Chase. This is literally one of my top five favorite romance books of all time. And um, I think the banter in here is so memorable. I love Henry and Sarah so much. Henry in here is Crown Prince of Wesco. It's a made up country, it's not real. And he is in need of a bride, but he's also in need for some fun. So when a like film company comes up to him and is like, hey, we'd love to do basically Bachelor Royal Edition, he immediately accepts. He's like, okay, I get to spend time with some beautiful women and possibly like meet my princess. I don't know, we'll see. So um, he decides to do this show. Sarah in here, her sister is one of the highborn ladies. Well, they're both highborn ladies, but her sister goes on the show and Sarah comes with her as kind of like a companion. She's not there as an actual contestant. She is gonna be living in a house with them um, to kind of like keep an eye on her sister. Anyway, Henry and Sarah end up meeting each other and end up falling head over heels in love with each other. They're intrigued by the other person and they become friends more so before the like full on romance comes in. And I think it's just beautiful. It's one of my favorite books of all time for a reason. And the bantering relationship that Henry has with Sarah is what I strive to have because Sarah 
I feel like is me in book form. So I'm like, where's my Henry? Come on, come on, Henry. <laughs> and hopefully he's a prince too. <laughs> but their banter in here, A plus, top notch, like had me laughing so much. An author that I think just in general does amazing banter is Chloe Lees. And one that I'm gonna highlight for this video is With You Forever. I feel like this book out of all of the Bergman Brother books, like I feel like this one holds the most banter in my brain, like that I can vividly remember. These two had me cackling and just, Oh, I love them so much. The tension, the angst between the two of them. But then they're also married too, because this is like a marriage of convenience situation. So this is about Rooney and Axel. Uh, Rooney, the heroine in here, she is best friends to Willa, the heroine from book one. She needs a vacation from, I think she's in law school. Anyway, she takes a vacation to the Bergman vacation uh, cabin home in the middle of nowhere. Um, no one knows in the family though that Axel has a property nearby and he's been fixing up the family cabin because it's kind of being run down um and she goes and stays with him because you cannot live in that cabin because it is uh, falling down um so they have like a forced proximity situation while uh he might need a little bit of an inheritance from his uncle but the only way he can get it is to be married so the two of them get married for convenience purposes and I love this one so much. Like the animals play in with their bantering a lot. Um, there's a dog named after Harry Styles in here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if I'm remembering correctly. The heroine finds the cat on the side of the road when she has to do an emergency like pullover situation. So <laughs> I love these two. I love everything about this book. And these two characters are just like everything. If you want a short novella that's on audio, I definitely recommend Call Me Maybe by Cara Bastone. This whole novella audio is chocked full of amazing banter. This is an Audible original audiobook, so you can listen to it on Audible if you have an Audible membership. And these two characters, the whole entire book is just them bantering with each other over the phone. So a heroine here is having some issue with I think a website she's creating and she used a certain site to create her website if that makes sense kind of like think wix so um she uses this site to generate her website so she needs help and she calls customer service and our hero here is basically the guy on the phone with her for customer service with this website and they just stay on the phone for like hours <laughs> and it is so so cute their whole relationship over the phone is just chock full of banter and then poking at each other and getting to know each other. It is so, so good. If you're a fan of Katie Robert or want to get into Katie Robert, I really recommend the last book in the Wicked Villain series for this trope. Um, Queen Takes Rose has great banter in it. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling between Maleficent and Aurora. Aurora for a long time has hated Maleficent because Maleficent betrayed her family in some way. I don't want to spoil it. Um, and so she thinks this is a perfect opportunity when Malone buys her, I think like an auction situation uh, to be with her for a week or two. And she just feels like this is going to be the perfect opportunity to get her revenge. But she ends up obviously falling in love with her instead. Because Aurora holds all this animosity towards Maleficent, that definitely feeds in to their bantering. It seems like she hates her, uh, but there's a fine line between love and hate, honey. <laughs> So this was another entertaining read. I have to put in a Ruby Dixon. Okay, Barbarian's Mate, number six in the series. Like this is a lot of people's favorite book in the series and with good reason. This book is unique so far in the series because it is book six. So, so far in the other books in the series, you haven't seen like any couples full on rejecting their mating bond. Oh, by the way, this is a part of the Ice Planet Barbarian series, which is an alien romance series where human women have crash landed on this ice planet and they find mates with these blue aliens, okay? So um, there has never been before this point someone who's rejected the mating bond, but Josie has. She thinks Hayden is mean and cruel and doesn't like her and doesn't see the point in fulfilling resonance or being mates with him if he's not going to love her the way she's always desired a man to love her. Josie's keeping a distance from Hayden because of this. She does not want to get her heart broken and she feels like if she opens her heart up to Hayden he's just gonna break it but Hayden all he wants is Josie he's never had a mate he wants her and he doesn't understand why this woman isn't opening up to him like resonance is resonance because the two of them don't necessarily get along this opens up a great stream of banter between the two of them they have to also go on this trek because Josie's like what if I get my cooey taken out 
maybe you don't have to be my mate anymore. And so Hayden's gonna do anything for this woman. So he's like, if you'd rather get your Kui taken out than be my mate, I guess I'll help you. Like he just wants this woman to be happy and he's gonna do anything, anything to do that. Again, there's a reason why everyone loves this book when they read this series. So be sure to pick this one up if you have not yet. I obviously have to mention The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn, if we're talking about historical romances. This is the book that uh, the inspiration of season two of Bridgerton came from. Um, this is the romance between Anthony and Kate and you can even see on the TV screen how they're bantering in tension and lust towards one another like full on go full force in this story. Anthony here is trying to find a wife and in this book he is determined to be with the crown jewel of the season, who happens to be Edwina. But what happens when he ends up actually developing these hateful, but also might be lustful feelings towards her sister instead. So um, I think this one is a great, great banterfield romance. And I feel like the show just ups it up a notch. <laughs> For another historical, I have How to Capture a Countess by Karen Hawkins. Rose is our heroine and Lord Sin is our hero. And so I think at one of her first ever balls that she went to, Rose ends up catching the eye of Sin. They get in this heated conversation, bantering, you know, like they are bantering. Um, but things go a little bit too far when Rose actually pushes this man into a fountain and he kind of becomes a laughing stock of the ton. And people have always made fun of him since then. It's like years later and he's never, ever, ever forgotten about Rose. He's like, I wanna get revenge on that woman for humiliating me in front of all those people. And so he finally finds Rose again and he is determined to make her feel as embarrassed as he did, but he ends up obviously falling in love with her instead. And Rose has never stopped thinking about Lord Sin. And that's all I'm gonna say. I love this book. Kieran Hawkins does banter phenomenally well. If you wanna read a historical with amazing banter, you have to pick up this series by her. This is the Duchess Diaries series. Fantastic. I love them. Lastly, it is towards Christmas time. So I would have to recommend a Christmas book, Christmas set book. I have a When She Was Naughty by Tessa Dare for a Christmas one. This one is such a jewel. It is a standalone historical Christmas novella, which is a rarity in the historical world. Normally historical Christmas set novellas are like a part of a series. Even take the Christmas part out of it. They're a part of a series. This one is completely standalone and is totally worth the read. This is the romance between Chloe and Justin. Chloe thinks that Justin absolutely hates her. Like they do not get along. They fight all the time. A little bit of, you know, like that's the way he's showing like affection. Um, and he's just nervous to talk to this woman. Okay. And he just, word vomits all the time and sometimes it's not like the most appropriate thing so um chloe just thinks that justin doesn't like her um and to kind of like play a little trick on him her family hosts an annual ball every year during christmas time and she's like okay uh you can come but it's an ugly waistcoat party um and he shows up to the ball and he's the only one in an ugly waistcoat and he really wanted to impress chloe that night and so he is so embarrassed and she tracks him down and figures out that maybe Justin has liked her this whole time and what does she do about that so I thoroughly enjoyed this one and I know y'all will too if you want to pick up a Christmas historical novella anyways there you have it those were some romance recommendations with amazing bantering in them let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the speech bubble emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching I will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all